Hey, today we got a nice little rifle to show you. This is a CZ 550 Varmint in 308. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I'd like to show you some close-ups, some features, some accuracy that I've seen out of the rifle and give you my overall impressions of it. It's probably going to be a long video. Let's start off with the fact that the rifle is totally unloaded, clear, and safe, and it's going to remain that way for the remainder of the video. This is a nice walnut. It's kind of a, I'd call it a semi-gloss, maybe like a polyurethane or a natural oil finish. I bought this from Bud's Gun Shop, sight unseen, and with wood, that's always a gamble. You never know what you're going to get. I didn't win the lottery. It's not the best example I've seen. I've seen some beautiful stocks from CZ. This is just a basic walnut, but they did a great job finishing it. Not one little issue I see at all. Starting off at the back, we have a nice rubber butt pad. It's firm. It's got a tiny bit of give to it, but it's not going to do a whole lot to reduce recoil. It kind of gives, reminds me of like the rubber on a basketball. Nice little wood spacer. At the bottom you have a swivel stud, and nice wood, nicely curved. The cheek piece is pretty much smooth. It has a tiny bit of curvature, not much. And then we come into some nice real wood checkering. They do a pretty cool job with that. One of the things you get with the CZ rifles is all wood, all steel. I cannot, and this is not a joke, I cannot find a piece of plastic on it. So, as you would see and expect, the trigger guard is all metal. The trigger is all metal. Really nice, really nice. The trigger has got a very small curvature to it. It's narrow, thin, feels excellent. We have a detachable box magazine that you can release using this button. Again, all metal. Not a piece of plastic on it. Then at the fore, fore end we have more checkering. Cool pattern. And it's really got some texture to it. You can really feel this checkering. Underneath this Harris bipod, there is another swivel stud. And check out that barrel. This is a varmint rifle from CZ, and <laughs> it sure is. That is a thick, long, heavy barrel. And in fact, the whole rifle is quite heavy. You got a massive Mauser style bolt and action. Nice high polished stainless steel on the bolt. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Again, all metal. I decided to pair this with a loophole VX3i 4.5 to 14 with a 50 millimeter objective. 30 millimeter tube. This is using Varn, or I should say it, Warn rings. They're medium. Now, the rifle uses 19 millimeter dovetail. I'll show you that in more detail. And look at that. That's about as good as you could ever hope for. That's like perfect. You want the scope as close as you can get it to the barrel without touching. And with the medium rings in this scope, just achieved it. Perfect, perfect, perfect couple of stampings from the factory. The end of the barrel has a nice recessed target crown. Great for keeping the muzzle free from dings and scratches. Taking a look at the other side of the rifle. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Give you a close-up of this wood. If you have a nice matte, maybe semi-gloss, walnut, good checkering. I'd say this side of the wood is a little bit fancier. It's 
stock has a nice little recess for your hand. Very nice. I'll be showing these features in more detail, but the receiver is Stamp CZ USA, Kansas City, Kansas. Sorry for the shake. CZ 550 with their logo. Serial number made in the Czech Republic. And 1 in 12 inch twist, caliber 308. The bluing on this rifle is good. It's not phenomenal, but it's good. I have noticed with other CZ rifles, though, that, you know, it is regular steel that has been blued, but it will rust if moisture gets close to it. So you want to make sure you keep that nice and oiled, nice and stored safely. Be very careful, treat it nice, and it'll last a long time. But, you know, it doesn't have a proprietary coating or anything like that. So you got to really take care of it. But it's a nice bluing job. CZ does a pretty good job with their checkering. Now, I, I'm no expert. I don't know the difference really between pressed and cut checkering. But this feels more aggressive than some. Which leads me to believe it might be cut checkering. In some directions, it's a little smooth. In others, you really get a good grip on it. It's very nice. Hey, check this out. Almost looks like the Ruger logo. The little phoenix. Pretty cool. Speaking of which, this has nothing to do with it, but this is the magazine that came with the gun. It's a detachable box magazine. Very nice. All metal. Metal follower. Everything is metal. Nice, glossy finish. Holds four rounds of 308. So this rifle is a 4 plus 1. And you got to really give a little bit of force to shove it in. And I find that in this situation, if I don't push it up forward from the beginning like that, it sometimes gets caught a little bit. So my trick is you just put it in forward and then push and it goes right in. Now, of course, this is all metal on metal. So you're going to hear this. So in the field, you're not going to be reloading uh, with your game nearby. Say, for example, you could try and do it slowly, and you could uh, release a magazine like this and hold this in. Try and insert it as quiet as possible. Yeah, that's about as quiet as I could get. Uh, it's still going to make noise, but I think it's cool that they sent from the factory a detachable box magazine. Whereas a lot of other rifles come with internal magazines, which are a pain. Uh, this one works great. No feeding issues, no problems at all. I've loaded it 4 plus 1, and ejecting the first round, you got to really pull that bolt back, but it works. And then after that, the next four in the magazine, they're smooth as butter. Now, I haven't seen any higher capacity magazines. There might be. Uh, I think it would be cool if they actually came with a 5-rounder or 10-rounder magazine. I think that would be a very nice accessory for this rifle. The CZ550 has a proprietary, or a pretty novel I should say, dovetail so that you can mount scope rings to it. Uh, you pretty much have to buy scope rings designed for the 19mm dovetail, specific to the CZ550. The front is just a dovetail, nothing fancy there, but the rear is dovetail and it also has this cutout, which most scope rings designed for this dovetail will have a little insert that puts it right there. It's a strange setup. Um, I'm not really sure why they did it, but they did it. At least I was able to find rings. So I have a loophole, four and a half to, I believe, 14. It's their VX3i, 50 millimeter scope. And it is mounted using these worn 30 millimeter tube, medium height rings. This is their 14BM. I really like these worn. Oh, I should raise it up so you can actually see it. I like these. They're made in the USA and they're solid steel. I've never had one problem with any of them and I've bought quite a few. Uh, 30 millimeters, so this fits this scope perfectly. And yeah, they weren't outrageously expensive and it's a very nice match for this scope. You can see there's almost no 
clearance here, which is perfectly fine. That's exactly what I want. I want it as low as I can get it. I have maybe about two millimeters clearance there. And it's a really nice setup. So if you're thinking of getting one of these CZ550s, I would say um, definitely the worn uh, scope rings are very nice. Uh, I have no complaints. And, you know, with the medium ring, I was able to fit a 50 millimeter objective loophole. Uh, just barely, but it works. To remove the bolt from the rifle for field stripping or cleaning, just pull the bolt back. And you can see this little button here. Just push the button forward, and the bolt comes right out. Simple as pie. And to reinsert the bolt, you just push it in and it clicks right back in. Another nice feature about this rifle is how easy it is to disassemble the bolt. For any of you that have a Remington 700, you'll appreciate this. So the bolt has a little button right here. And the way you use this is close the bolt, push and hold the button, and then open the bolt. And now that's disassembled it somehow. Pull the bolt out, push this in to release the bolt. And now the back of the bolt is able to just easily unscrew. Somehow it's retained the spring and taken the spring tension off. And there you go. Out it comes. Very easy to clean. And you would expect the same thing to reassemble. Just do that. It doesn't have to be all the way tight. It's just around there. Push it back in. Close the bolt. This button is no longer pushed in. And there you go. That's how easy it is to disassemble and reassemble the bolt. At the back of the bolt is a caulking indicator right here. So if we caulk the hammer, there's this little purple button that sticks out. So you could feel it if you wanted, or you could just look at it. And when you pull the trigger, it goes away. The CZ550 Varmint has a two-position safety, and when I was first playing the, with this rifle, I didn't know that. And it really felt like a three-position safety. So, red is dead, safety is not engaged, you can fire the trigger, exactly what you expect. Okay. Well, then there is a position right here, and it's a real detent. It really feels like it's made to be put there. And then you can go another detent, and that's the real safe position. So I thought it really was a three position safety. And now check it out, it almost works like a three position safety. There's the middle position, if I push the trigger, nothing happens. But I can cycle the bolt. This is exactly how a three position safety should work. But now if I push the trigger, oh boy, it was not on safe. Mm -mm. Uh, th that could screw some people over bad. So just keep in mind, this is not a three position safety. Your only options are red is dead, you're not on safe, or go past this one. That's full safe right there. You cannot fire the trigger and you cannot work the bolt. So keep that in mind. That's something you really want to be careful of. It is not a three position safety, only two. One of the things with CZ rifles is they just don't have the smoothest bolt actions. They work. There's nothing wrong with how they work. They're just not smooth, smooth, smooth. So, I think you can hear there's a lot of metal rubbing. It's actually a very long throw for a 308. It's a Mauser style action. And there's a lot of rubbing. I haven't used this a whole lot, so it's still not fully broken in. So it will get better with use. And also what you can do is parts where you have a little bit of rubbing, you can put a tiny bit of grease and that can help smooth it out a lot. But it's just not gonna be the smoothest bolt action. But it works. And when you put a little bit of force behind it, it works perfectly fine. One of the most interesting things about this rifle, and actually the reason I got it, is because it has a set trigger. Now, you can use this rifle like any other rifle. The bolt is closed, it's cocked, 
There is no round in the chamber, so it's completely safe, and you can just push on the trigger. There is no take up, and essentially no over travel. Look at that, amazing. That pulls at right at two pounds, according to my trigger pull scale. Now that's nice. Most people would actually pick up this rifle, shoot it like that, and say, wow, I don't need anything better. But this has a set trigger. So if you want to make the pull weight even lighter, you can push the trigger forward, it clicks into place, and now you have a hair trigger. Now just the tiniest push will set it off. That pulls in around eight ounces, eight ounces under a pound. It's crazy. Now, why would you want it? What are the pros? What are the cons? Well, I would say the regular trigger is going to be perfect for almost everybody. And I would get this rifle just for the regular trigger. If you never use that set trigger, you would have an amazing rifle. One of the reasons you might want to put it into set trigger is to have the lightest trigger pull weight you could actually want. And I would only see that being uh, a situation maybe for target shooting. I don't think you're going to go into the field hunting uh, and then put the set trigger. I think, I mean, I could be wrong, but I just don't really see it happening. One of the negatives with the set trigger is with this cartridge, you have a 308. And if you notice, there's a fair amount of distance that you push the trigger forward. And when you push the trigger, it jumps back. So coupled with the recoil and the fact that the trigger jumps, uh, it might startle you. It's a very strange experience, one that I'm not used to. It doesn't feel like a regular trigger. The trigger jumps out of your hand. Whereas if you just use the regular trigger, there's almost no over travel. And it's as if your finger is always in contact with the trigger. There's always resistance. Now you're going to still have the same recoil from the rifle, but the trigger just feels normal. The other downside about the set trigger, and I gotta call it again, is when you have your hand on the gun, you have a certain reach to the trigger. But when you put it into set trigger mode, you've increased that by about a centimeter, maybe half an inch. And if you have small hands, that might start to become quite a reach for you. It is for me, uh, I don't like shooting it in set mode frequently because it is long reach you really have to adjust your hand position but eight ounces i mean if you're doing target shooting and you want to get the best accuracy you know think about it that's pretty good now this trigger is fully adjustable it's adjustable four ways you can adjust the pre-travel over travel regular weight and set trigger weight so if you wanted, you could up these values. You can make it a heavier trigger in either regular or set mode. Um, I have tweaked this down to about as light as I can get. S the regular trigger, two pounds, without modifying it, that's as light as I can get it. And the set trigger, around eight ounces, again, that's as light as I can get it. If I go much lighter, if I start going below eight ounces, um, I run into safety problems where it'll accidentally shoot itself without really pushing the trigger it doesn't catch properly and then the safety doesn't work so these are about the minimums that you can get without modifying the rifle okay let's actually see what these triggers pull at i'm using a wheeler trigger pull scale let's try the regular trigger first okay regular trigger now i consistently get two pounds all the time on this one this is so consistent I'm going to go very slow and gentle to get the most accurate result I can. Okay. Right on two pounds. It's always two pounds. It's an extremely consistent trigger. Okay, I'm going to zero this and let's go to set mode. Now this one is not always as 
consistent, but it's pretty much a hair trigger. I get around eight ounces, sometimes a little bit less, which for this scale is pretty much imperceptible. Eight ounces is about as low as it's rated to go. So I'm going to just touch it gently. Oh, scares me every time. Below eight ounces. Uh, I'm going to try it one more time. Okay, scale is zeroed again. And I'm going to go as perpendicular as I can, as carefully as I can. Oh, <laughs> I mean, come on, look at that. That moved all of a millimeter. <laughs> so, needless to say, eight ounces, maybe a little bit less. Uh, maybe a lot less. I got this rifle new. It came in a CZ cardboard box. It wasn't anything fancy, but let's look at some of the product literature that came with it. Here I have the owner's manual. And this is pretty cool. When you first open it up, you're greeted by a picture of all the parts, an exploded diagram. Every part is numbered, so this gives you an idea of how to take apart and reassemble the gun, and also gives you all the parts numbered, just in case you have to replace or repair anything. So that's very nice. I love it when a manufacturer includes that. Some don't, and you're just left, uh, you know, Googling it. Then they give you some nice pictures showing different features of the rifle, and this is all explained in the manual itself. They go through many, many pages. And then at the back, you get some more pictures showing more features of the rifle. So here they're showing you how to disassemble the bolt. Here they're showing three out of the four ways to adjust the trigger. Here's the fourth, how to remove the bolt. And of course, this is all explained in the manual. Yeah, you know, it's not an American gun. It's not made in America, but this manual is good. You can actually read it and you can actually learn how the gun works, how to adjust it, and, you know, parts to buy if you ever need to repair or replace anything. So it's really nice. I like that. Also included in the package is a printout of the target, test target they did, as you can see. They claim that this was shot at 50 meters using 308 Gecko 170 grain ammo. The crosshair is the point of aim, and then you have the three shots, and then the black dot is the mean of those three shots. So the mean is right near the point of aim. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they're aiming it because it doesn't have any sights. Maybe they're bore sighting it. I don't know. But that's what they claim. You know, 50 meters, this is coming up to about an inch. That's not bad for a tech, probably rushing through all the different guns. Also included are these two warranty manuals. There's an actual booklet for all the different languages, and then a card. The booklet is actual CZ, the Czech company. They say that the product is warranted for 24 months for wood and surface finish parts, so two years, and then 36 months for other parts, so a three-year warranty. Um, all they say is please keep the original sales receipt, and it is a transferable warranty to other people. Just keep that sales receipt. So two years for wood and surface, three years for the whole rifle, all the other parts. But that's CZ themselves. In addition to that, you get this CZ USA warranty. Now they warranty the wood and the surface treatments only for one year, but then the whole other parts of the rifle for five years. So it's strange, you actually get two warranties. So the wood, it seems uh, CZ USA only goes for a year, but if you have problems within two years, send it to CZ themselves. And maybe they'll actually be able to use CZ USA as a repair station. And then CZ USA warranties it for five years, more than the three that came with the gun itself. 
And finally, how much did I pay? <laughs> well, I got this from Bud's Gun Shop. This was in the end of May 2017. I paid $721 for the rifle. And then when you add in shipping and fees, it's about $755 brand new. That was model 04160. That's the CZ550 Varmint 308. When I bought it, and still today, they call it a discontinued product that's still in limited runs. I don't know how long they're going to keep producing it in limited runs or if it'll ever come back in full production. But every once in a while you can find it. It's kind of hard to get it new. They, they do sell out pretty quickly. But... All in all, it's a nice little package. I'd like to show you some of the accuracy I'm getting out of this rifle. I went to the range with this three times, so this is going to take a while. If you want to just skip the accuracy, go to where you no longer see any targets. These are the first shots that I really took with the rifle after sighting in the scope. Uh, this was just for me to try different ammo and see what it felt like. All of these are at 100 yards, 92 meters, using a Harris bipod with a sandbag in the back. First shots aimed here, I got one, two, three, four, five. This is with PPU bulk, full metal jacket, bolt tail, 145 grains. And that's a big group, that's probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe about four, four inches or so. That's poor. But the ammo's junk anyway, so. Then, number two. Coming up here, aimed here. One, two, three, four, five. This is PPU 150 grain soft point. Again, not good. Probably about three to four inches. And then I came down here. Now we're starting to get into some of the better ammo. This is with... PPU match 168 grain. This is their hollow point bolt tail. I aimed here But my first two shots were down here About I'd say five to six inches low of where I aimed and you're gonna see that this is a recurring theme The 168s and the 175s they shoot about five inches lower than the 140s and the 150s It's weird so after I noticed that I was about five inches low, I raised the scope up, took another three shots, again aiming here. So of course I'll have to move the scope over to the right, but you know, that's not bad for a three shot group, about an inch, you know, maybe a minute of angle. PPU match, it's not the best, it's not the worst. So that's pretty interesting. Then I came over here, same ammo, and I did a five shot group. One, two, three, four, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. That opens up. That's probably about high ones, maybe about two inches. Not too good. Not too good. But again, this is my first time with the rifle. I'm still getting used to it, trying different loads. I believe all of those were with the set trigger. I don't have it written down, but I believe it was. That's my first time to the range. Now the second one. Again, all of these are at 100 yards with a Harris bipod, sandbag at the back, loophole set at 14 times, side focus set parallax, uh, all with the set trigger. So, where do I start? Number one, I aimed right here. Now the rifle from the previous range was still zeroed for the 168 grain. Shots one are with PPU bulk 308 full metal jack 145. So I aimed here, but this is actually the shots from number one. One, two, three, four, and then five. This is a huge group. This sucks. And again, it's about five, maybe even six inches above the point of aim. I have written down here 3.16 inches. That's a bad group. Okay. Well, then what? 
And then I came over here. I aimed here for number two. But I actually hit up here. Number two is Seller and Bellot, 147 grain, full metal jacket, 308. It's not match ammo, but it's good. So one, two, three, four, five. 1.19 inches. That's really good for just regular ammo. Uh, again, it's about 5 inches high because it's one of the lighter loads. But that's not bad. And in fact, that's probably the best shooting that I did out of this rifle for all three range trips. It, it liked the Seller and Bellot best. Yeah, that's where I shot best. So that's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Number three, then I came down here. Number three is Federal Gold Medal Match. Now we're getting to the good stuff. 175 grain Sierra Match King. Aimed here. One, two, three, four, five. I measure that to be about 1.36 inches. And this is about what I can expect. This is typical with match grade ammo out of this rifle. Not bad. I was shooting about an inch high, so going from this one to the next one, I lowered the scope one min of angle, four clicks. Number four, aimed here, came here. Well, actually, I take that back. I aimed here, but my first shot is all the way up here. So aimed, first shot. Number four, this is PPU soft point 150 grain. So again, the light ones are aiming about five inches higher than the heavy ones. So what did I do? This was my first shot. Then I lowered the scope five minutes of angle. And then I came down here and got these. One, two, three, four. This four shot group is 1.35 inches. Yeah. It's always more than a minute of angle. Not much more, but only a four shot group. Then number five, then I came back to the center, aimed here, and actually hit here. Number five is ZQI, their M80 load, 147 grain, made in Turkey. Aimed here, one, two, three, four, five, so bulk ammo, cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. And again, coming from four to five, I raised the scope. I was aiming low. I raised it about one minute of angle. It's acceptable, but I kind of expected more. You know? This rifle is built as being a varmint rifle. It's got a huge, heavy, thick, long barrel. I actually kind of wanted minute of angle or lower. I'm getting minute of angle, if I'm lucky, maybe up to two or higher. This was my third time. This time I actually brought a Caldwell lead sled. So I'm going all in. I'm trying the good ammo. Let's see what we get. All of these are set trigger except for the last one. So I'll, I'll say it. I'll show you. Number one, aimed right at dead center. Hit right here. I started off warming up the rifle with PPU bulk, 145 grain. One, two, three, four, five. That measured 1.4 inches for that five-shot group. You know, for bulk ammo, that one worked good that day. Then number two, aimed right here again, three shots. This is Federal Gold Middle Match, 168 grain, Sierra Match King. Again, about five to six inches low. This is not a good three-shot group, 1.44 inches. Again, 100 yards. Then what do I have? Okay, so going from 2 to 3, then I move my scope up 2.5 minutes of angle. And then I shoot this. This is Federal Gold Medal Match, 168 grain. Set trigger. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Not terrible. Coming in at about 1.5 inches between maximums. You know, not terrible. Then from 3 to 4, I move the scope up another 0.75 minutes of angle. And let's see, where's 4? Okay, here's 4. Again, Federal Gold Medal Match, 168 grains. 1, 2, 3. Sorry, I'm moving up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
That's a big rope. That could totally have been me. I don't know. 2.2 inches. Not good. Not good. And then the very last shots were number five. Same ammo, Federal Gold Metal Match, but this time I decided to try it without the set trigger. So aimed here, one, two, three, four, five. Came in at 1.63 inches between shots. Neglecting this to warm up the rifle. Everything else is Federal Gold, gold Metal Match, 168 grains. And if I average all those 15 shots, I come up at about 1.7 minutes of angle on average you know if this was a cheap cheap rifle just a thin barrel i would say okay whatever you get what you pay for this is a 700 dollars or more rifle from the factory with a thick heavy long barrel it's built as being a varmint rifle do you consider that varmint quality precision Federal gold metal match averaging about 1.7 inches, 1.7 minutes of angle, roughly, at 100 yards. I expected better. I'll be honest with you. I would want a minute of angle or less out of a 308, and I was trying my absolute best. So I don't know. I'm not 100% happy. It was billed as being a varmint, and, you know, when your shots could be up to two inches off between shots, you know, if you're shooting little animals or whatever, even just paper targets, that's not too good. And then you throw in the fact that between the 140s and the 150s, compared to the 160s and the 170s, there is a huge, about five to six inch shift. That is weird. I have a Remington 700 that shoots much better and does not have this 5 to 6 inch difference. They shoot roughly about the same, maybe about an inch off at 100 yards. So, you know, it's a great gun. Build-wise, looks nice, really cool. It's going to last the test of time. It's just not the most precise, or at least for me. Um, your mileage may vary. You know, just as a comparison, that last target on the same day, I also went out and shot my Remington 700. Same condition, same day, 100 yards, uh, first shots right here. This is PPU bulk, when the, the 145 grains, five shots, one, two, three, four, five. That's coming in at 1.55 inches, so that's the junk ammo. Then... The next three are all with Federal Gold Medal Match, 168 grain, Sierra Match King. So then we come here. Essentially, it's shooting around here, and then around here. There's no point of impact change uh, between the Bulk 145 and the Sierra 168. Nothing. I don't even notice it. This is five shots. One, two, three, four, five. That's my bad one. That's 0.93 inches. That's 0.88 minutes of angle. And I come up here. Same ammo. One, two, three, four, five. That's 0.7 inches. Then I come over here. And again, this is uh using the Caldwell lead sled. Five shots. One, two, three, four, and somewhere in there is a fifth one. That's 0.6 inches, you know, almost, almost a ragged hole at 100 yards, match grade ammo. That's a Remington 700, you know, really souped up, but stock barrel. Yeah, the CZ is a cheaper rifle price-wise, but I actually expected similar quality, similar accuracy, similar precision, and I'm not getting that. I have other CZs. I have CZ 452s that are 22s. They're good. They're minute of angle guns all day long or better. And I have a CZ 452 in 17 HMR. Again, beautiful rifle. But this one, I'm just not getting the accuracy.
So today I got a little treat for you. This is a CZ550 Varmint rifle chamber in 308. The pet is making an appearance. Oh no, kitty, you're in the way. <laughs> Hi guys. So I got a treat for you today. No, it's not my cat. Although that's part of the video. Hey guys, I got a treat for you today. Hey guys, I got a treat for you today. So, <laughs> it's not the cat. <laughs> but it is in fact a CZ 550 Varmint in 308. This is a cool little rifle. I'd like to show you some of the features of it, some of the close-ups, some of the accuracy, all that good stuff. Please excuse the really cheap videography work. Oh, cat's in the way. <laughs> you never know how these videos are going to turn out.